Welcome back to EDH Deck Building. I'm your host, Demo, and it's time for another Deck Tech. Today we're doing Togo and Kesket. This is my Rock Chucker deck. Um, I, I thought that this, you know, Togo, as I mentioned in my Commander review, Commander Legends review, Togo really partners with a lot of different um, other partner commanders just because he's, you know, he, you can do a landfall strategy, you can do a, he's making artifact tokens, um, so there's lots you can do with that. You know, I really think the equipping the rocks and chucking them, it, it can be a little mana t intensive, so I thought, you know, I really liked Keskit's ability, the ability of... I mean, that's really powerful. Looking at the top three cards of your library um, and putting two into your hand and one in your graveyard, that, that's a really powerful... I mean, it, it has a high cost, right? Sacrifice three other artifacts or and or creatures. Um, but you're getting two... So you're essentially drawing two cards and then throwing one into your graveyard, which, uh, of course, sometimes you want stuff in your graveyard, right? The, the other thing I'll just note here, I didn't do this in this deck, but I'll just note this about Keskit. His ability is not a draw. So if you want to throw, like, a Marilyn in your deck and, you know, and then nobody gets to draw, but you still get to look at the top three cards, uh, I just thought that was an interesting little pairing that you could do, but... Moving on with what we're doing in this deck, you know, I think it's fairly obvious with these two. You want to be making the artifact tokens. You want to be sacrificing them. So this is a, uh, a combination sacrifice and token making theme, right? I mean, obviously, Dockside Extortionist is just a, a powerhouse in this deck. And, and he's a powerhouse in most decks. Uh, fantastic in this deck. So he's obviously going to be the first thing we put in this deck. Also have Brass's Bounty, also have Revel and Riches. Both of these guys are going to be huge. We can actually even win the game with Revel and Riches. This is not, um, especially because there is lots of removal, so we, we will be killing lots of our opponent's creatures, but um, we will also be making lots of treasure tokens. So it is possible just to win the game with Revel and Riches. So I'll, I'll go just go over the rest of the token makers here. Endrixar. Uh, I talked about this in my Nadir and Miara deck about how I, I actually had never used him before in a deck. He's super fantastic, um, especially if you're going to be sacrificing the tokens, right? We can, you know, any every time we cast a creature, we're going to create some Thrall tokens, and then we can just immediately sack three of them to Keskit, and then we don't have to worry about going over that seven or more, right? And then speaking of which, we also have Nadir. Why not, right? Um, I've gushed about Nadir a lot. I think he's fantastic. He's There's so many different things that he's doing that he just fits in a lot of decks. I think he can go in the 99 of a lot of decks. Here we are. We're going to be sacrificing lots of tokens. So he's going to be getting big. Then we can sacrifice him, make more tokens. I mean, there's he's just so versatile in this deck and fits really well. Pitiless Plunderer is another card that is just a no-brainer in any sort of aristocrat-style deck. In particular, it's fantastic in this deck because we're sacking stuff. We can make uh, treasure tokens, and then we can sack the treasure tokens to our casket as well. So he's fantastic in this deck. I also like Sengir Autocrat. I believe I also threw him in my Nadir and Miara deck. To be able to cast him and... I get those three surf tokens that I can immediately sack to Casket. Essentially what I'm doing is I'm paying four mana to look at the top three cards in my library and then, you know, put two in my hand and one in the graveyard. That's not bad value. However, what's even better value is the fact that we are going to be taking advantage, obviously, of all these sack triggers and our creatures dying and stuff like that, right? So we're not just getting Casket's ability out of it. Elemental Mastery. I came across this one and, you know... It doesn't seem great, but it's really perfect for this deck because what you can do is you just, as long as you stick this on a creature that is a power three or greater, you're going to create your three tokens every turn, right? So you put this on a creature that has at least a power of three. Unfortunately, um, neither of our commanders do. I mean, Togo has a power of two, so we can put it on Togo and then create two elemental tokens and then maybe create a rock token and then we have our three you know that basically the idea of this deck is we want to be creating at least three tokens every single turn that we can sacrifice to casket we want to be using casket's ability every single turn so elemental mastery on any i mean imagine elemental mastery on nadir how perfect is that you know like you 
you tap him, create three tokens, you sack the three tokens, and the deer gets huge. He gets bigger. He, he becomes a 6-6. Six, six. And then the next time, he creates six tokens. That's a fantastic combination there. Obviously, you know, exile at the end of turn, that's never going to happen because we're going to just be sacrificing them every time we put them into play. Zat's Will. I like the, uh, you know, each opponent sacrifices a creature that control the greatest power. I, I always like effects like that. Um, it's sort of like a crackling doom effect, which I really, really like. You know, making someone sack a creature is just, eh, it's okay in Commander, but making them sack their biggest creature is is actually pretty good. Uh, but of course, the, the most important part is the second part, which is is you exile all, all cards from your opponent's graveyards, which is already, again, that's another ability that, you know, exiling your opponent's graveyards, it's not hitting us, which is good, because we don't want our graveyard exiled. It hits all your opponent's graveyards, Great, so that's already good. It's going to hose any graveyard decks. And then on top of that, you're going to get a whole bunch of, of Thrall tokens that you can then sack, so great card. Carrion, you know, I've mentioned this. <laughs> it's kind of funny how I mentioned this card. I think I mentioned it for my Nadir deck. I mentioned it in my top, you know, my 10 cards you should be playing. It's so good in any sort of an aristocrat-style deck because you can sacrifice a creature you get the the sack trigger you get more tokens then we can sack the tokens you know nadir gets a bunch of tokens on him then we can sacrifice him we get all the elf tokens and all of the uh, maggot you know i think they're insect tokens actually on the errata but they call them maggots on the card yeah i mean it just works so good and i love what i love most about this card is that it's an instant so you can do it in response like someone is going to swords your nadir and you just sack it in response and you get a, a lot more value out of it uh gradric the, the crown scourge you know i, I made a, a deck with this guy right as soon as this guy was spoiled i was like oh man that, that's a cool card i want to make a, a deck with it the, the problem with gadrick though that makes him really underwhelming is that you create a treasure token for each non-token creature that died this turn that makes him really, you know, it makes him very underwhelming. And even in this deck, it, it's not super good. However, uh, we will be just straight up killing our opponent's creatures a lot. So I, I think the payoff is worth it just, to, just for one slot in their deck. Loyal Apprentice, I really like. Uh, he works in a lot of decks too. Just making a token every turn that we can sacrifice is really, really good. I mean, that's essentially the token makers. And then... So then we want to get more benefit. We don't want to just be sitting there making tokens and sacrificing them every turn. I mean, that's good value, sure, but why not get more value out of it, right? You know, the the, the absolute all-star in this deck is Mayhem Devil. I mean, this guy is just so fantastic. It, it, he's the kind of card that you don't realize until he sits on a table for a while in a commander game how good it is. It's whenever a player sacrifices a permanent he deals a damage. So when your opponent sacks a fetch land, that triggers him and you get to kill something or, or deal a damage, right? I mean, he's, he can be so good just sitting on a table and, and just pinging people and killing creatures and stuff. I mean, obviously in this deck, he's fantastic. We're going to sacrifice three things. That's three damage, right? That That's just a lot of damage we're going to be able to throw around. And, and also, I mean, we have lots of treasure tokens. We have lots of things that we're going to be sacrificing anyway. It's, it's not just going to be Keskit. I mean, even Togo, right? Togo, his ability, he has rocks that, that sacrifice themselves, right? So that's two more damage. So that's a total of three damage from one rock, essentially, right? We also have Blood Aspirant. You know, uh, again, whenever you sacrifice a permanent, I, I like that permanent thing because it, you know, it includes treasure tokens. It includes everything. It even includes fetch lands and everything else that we sacrifice. So he's going to get real big real fast. He also has the ability to um, sacrifice stuff ourselves you know if we want to we can use him as a sack outlet jury from the new set you know when i this was almost going to be a jury deck i i originally made a jury deck i didn't love it because if all you're doing is sacrificing your stuff all the time you run out of resources real fast and jury all you're getting out of jury is you're getting a really big creature that you know it dies and deals damage it's sort of like a one shot but great in the deck because again it's a sacrifice up permanent so every time we sack a treasure token we get a counter on judith you know again this th th there's so many cards uh, i also have lazolda in this deck right lazolda you know judith jury you could almost swap out 
any of those cards as your commander for this deck you you might want to change a few things but it's similar like i've, I've made a lazolda deck in the past that is similar to this it, you know in a lazolda deck i'd probably have more creatures and not so much with the with the treasure tokens thing but it still works in this deck judith again i'd probably have more creatures and again and judith is non-token token thing doesn't work as well Still works good in this deck, though. The, those cards still work good in this deck. Good enough to be in the deck anyway. We, we're going to have lots of our creatures dying. So it, it definitely... And don't underestimate the, the creatures you control get plus one, plus O, oh, because of all the token creatures we have, right? Uh, if Nadir is going to make, you know, 15 elf tokens, it sure is going to benefit us if they have... If they are two ones instead of one ones, right? I got Harvester Souls. I mean, that's just a great card that... Again, Harvester Souls is a lot, a lot like Mayhem Devil where it's... You know, you just plop it on the table and it'll just sit there and you, you, it just starts drawing you cards and you don't you don't even realize how much value you can get out of it. Havoc Jester is another... Is a sort of a... Uh, I guess a poor man's Mayhem Devil. This is the exact same thing. I shouldn't say it's a poor man's because it does the same thing. It just costs more, that's all. So it's just another... Mayhem Devil, because it sacrifices any permanent and it deals damage to, to one damage to any target. And, you know, it's a 5-5, five, five, too. It's a bigger body, so that's all right. And then I have, you know, I have Nadir's Nightblade. I have Blood Artist. You know, you get, you do, you got to have a couple of those sacri um, aristocrat uh, effects, right? You, so you can benefit from all the, the sacrificing you're doing. Also have a lot of Morbid, you know, Reaper from the Abyss, Malicious, Affliction, Tragic Slip. You know, we're just, it's its going to be so easy to get that morbid. It, it's just a, you know, we, we have to have at least a few of those cards in, in the deck, right? So we're going to be benefiting a lot from our creatures dying, from our opponent's creatures dying, etc. You know, that being said, obviously Dictative, Erebos, and Grave Pact are going to be killer in this deck. With that, and then I also have Plague Crafter, I also have Soul Shatter. I mean, our, our opponent's just won't be able to keep a creature in play, probably, you know. A few more cards that I put in here. Uh, Thousand Year Elixir, another card that I have touted quite a bit already on this channel. This used to be a really popular card in Commander, and they reprinted, they started reprinting it a bunch in a lot of Commander sets because it was there was a high demand for it. And then it started to trail off. I, I don't see it much anymore. If you have a commander that has a tap ability, this is an auto include, I think, because you, you know, we want to be able to use our casket right away. As soon as he comes into play, we want to use him. So for that reason, you know, I play tested this deck in a few times, and I just thought, man, being able to use casket immediately is so important. So I put uh, Bloodlust Insider in here as well, just a one drop. He can tap to give our casket haste, and then we can sacrifice him. Anger is fantastic in this deck. Um, you know, obviously it gives our creatures haste. We can sacrifice it to put it in our graveyard. And also, don't forget, Keskit's ability is look at the three cards and put one in your graveyard. So we can just chuck our anger directly in our graveyard, which is also why Reassembling Skeleton is a no-brainer in this deck. You know, again, it's any any aristocrats where you want to be sacking stuff constantly, Reassembling Skeleton is an auto-include. But in particular in this deck, because we're looking at the top three cards and we can keep two and then put our reassembling skeleton in our graveyard, then we can immediately just return it to play if we want to. A couple other neat little cards I have in this deck. Renegade's Getaway. Here's a here's a card that I'm sure most people have never seen in an EDH game. This is, you know, as far as I can tell, there's not a lot of non-white cards that make things indestructible. Um, white and green sort of has the, the monopoly on those cards. I mean, this is just save something of yours right like target permanent permanent not just creature any permanent you control is indestructible until end of turn right so if somebody tries to wasteland your cabal coffers which we do have in this deck you know make it indestructible you're good right problem solved and then i mean that ability is good but i like also you get that colorless servo token right so then it just it, it's making us another token that we can use to sacrifice I, I just, I really like when a card is doing double duty in a deck that you're getting more than just one thing out of it. And then, you know, we're good. We're going to want a lot more sacrifice effects. So Hell's Caretaker is a card, another card that is way underused. Um, it, it's a little annoying that you have to use it on your upkeep. You know, I mentioned this, I think, with Gate to the Phyrexia, where they have, you know, all these old cards. You you had to do everything during your upkeep for some reason. I'm, I'm not sure why. I guess that's just the way the game was. But he's fantastic in this deck. 
Like, you know, let's sacrifice our solemn simulacrum, right? Um, and draw a card and bring our, you know, whatever, our jury back into play. And then the next turn we can sacrifice our jury, deal a bunch of damage, get our, our sad robot back, get a land, like so much value there. If Hell's Caretaker can stay in play in a lot of decks, you know, like I can't believe people don't play this card in like a Marin deck. The value you can get if it sticks for a little while is so good. And also God Eternal Bantu. Again, I like the option of any permanent. It doesn't have to be artifacts, doesn't have to be creatures or whatever. Any permanent you can sacrifice, right? So Yeheni, I mean, what, what can you say about Yeheni that hasn't already been said? He goes in any deck that's doing Aristocrats. He goes in any deck that's doing, I mean, he goes in any black deck, almost period. I mean, he's just so, there's so many things you can do with him. He's a finisher for a lot of decks just because he can sit there and just get huge and kill your opponents. He's just fantastic all around. And then I got Attrition. This is another card that used to get played in EDH a lot, and I almost never see it anymore. I mean, just one black sacrifice a creature, destroyed target, non-black creature. I remember when I first started playing EDH, when someone would get this on the table, you just wouldn't play creatures, <laughs> you know, unless they were black. You basically just had to keep your creatures in your hand. It's like Aura Shards, right? When someone has an Aura Shards out, you basically just keep your enchantments and artifacts. You can't play them. Because they'll just get destroyed, right? That's that's what attrition is. Attrition is your your opponents can't play creatures. Your opponents can't play non-black creatures because they're just going to get killed. And again, with cards like that and dictate and and all the uh, the other stuff, our opponents, you know, I find it highly unlikely that our opponents are going to even be able to keep any creatures in play. Highly unlikely, I guess. Probably you'll be asking, okay, well, how do we finish the game? Weird thing with me when I make decks is. You know, how do I close out the game or how do I, what, how do I, what's my win con? Everyone always says, right? My win con for 99% of my decks is I just attack with my creatures just as the game was intended. That's it. And I just, I grind it out and I, you know, I'll drain my opponents with my blood artist and I'll, I'll, my Nadir will get real big and I'll smack with him or I'll, I'll, I'll ping them with my mayhem devil or I'll, you know, whatever, or I'll get a bunch of tokens out and I'll pump them with with Judith and attack with them. I mean, that's it. That's that's really how my decks play out. I don't have those big splashy plays. I don't play Torment to Hellfire. Fire. I don't play Exsanguinate. I hate those cards. My philosophy of the game is I, I don't like, whoever gets the most mana wins the game. That That's just, I, I don't, that's just not fun for me. I, I don't find that entertaining at all. No, Nobody has ever gone, oh wow, you cast Torment to Hellfire for 10. That's amazing. No one's ever said that, ever. Cause that's not amazing. It's lame. This is the decks that I make. I grind it out, drain your life, attack you with my creatures, you know, as the game was intended, I think. So that, that's pretty much it. That's this deck in a nutshell. That is my Rock Chucker deck, Keskit and Togo. Thanks for tuning in.